After recently doing a video on PF Blocker NG, I realized a lot of people are a little confused, and I'm making this video to clear this up because they're always asking Pi Hole or PF Blocker NG. This is some posts on Reddit. Another post on Reddit Can PF Blocker replace the Pi Hole? Or PF Blocker NG versus Pi Hole? Or all the people commenting on my YouTube? Same question. All right, let's define the two projects very quickly. Pi hole network wide ad blocking a black hole for the internet advertisement. So, PF uh, Blocker and Pi hole do a similar service. They work as well. Pi hole specifically works as an external DNS server. So, you have your router, which frequently in most home networks would be serving up the DNS, or you use an external DNS server as for name resolution for websites. What the Pi hole system does is DNS blacklisting or sinkholing of a site. So it creates a black hole, hence the reason kind of like a black hole looking thing behind here and calling it pi hole. And you're basically going through and saying, all right, these are sites I don't want to resolve in my browser because they track me or I just don't want to see them. Therefore, they go away. This requires that when you set this up, when you configure this, that you use pi hole as your DNS server. And so here, this is an example in some type of router, probably a consumer router. It reminds me of the old Linksys one. I think that's what a screenshot is from. You go to your DHCP servers, you build your separate device, the pi hole, and it will run on a Raspberry Pi, hence its namesake. And uh, you plug in the DNS settings for it as this to be your server. Cool, awesome. It's, it's a nice little system. I like it, it's cool but it's not necessary with PF Blocker. Here's the PF Blocker project. Now there's different prerequisites for PF Blocker. First one is you gotta have a PF Sense box. PF Blocker is an add-on for PF Sense. It's a package that you load. The feed system and everything's the same as it is for Pi-hole. It's using a different list that you have on the internet and you can say, hey, I want these things to be black hold, sync hold. And like in the screenshot they have here, settings.windata, that's the Microsoft telemetry server. Maybe you want a black hole of that. Well, you do that with PF Blocker. Now, PF Blocker is not itself a DNS server, but PF Sense has a DNS server built into it. This is an add-on, it works within the DNS server of PF Sense. So in that respect, they're the same. So there's not a need to run both. And for me, and, and my opinion on this is that it's more convenient if I'm already running PF Sense to run PF Blocker and problem solved. It's doing the same things. I can go here, I can update the list, I can uh, add feeds and sinkhole different things. But PF Blocker also has an advantage of not just being a separate device that you have to manage or change DNS servers because you still leave PF Sense as your DNS server. You're, this is just an add-on to sinkhole those. This also does IP blocking and creating firewall rules. So this is where PF Blocker goes beyond. So you have the same functionality of DNS and the extended functionality of working with the firewall to do blocking of sites and feeds. So you can go here, and we'll use, for example, GOAP blocking, and you can say block these domains. Now this is doing it at the firewall level, not the DNS level. So the IP addresses themselves become unreachable, whether they're inbound or outbound because it supports both. And this is, like I said, working in conjunction with the firewall. This is not a firewall on top of a firewall. This is just rule sets being built inside the firewall itself. Therefore, you're gonna see rules such as these that say, you know, PFB for PF blocker, top four, and some of the GOIP blocking. And now we've created firewall rules in addition. Now, to me, like I said, PF blocker is something more advanced than Pi Hole. It is a system that's doing both DNS and IP filtering and creating firewall rules dynamically based on lists that get load and showing you what the uh, states and things that are blocked are. So it's a much more advanced system compared to the simplicity of Pi Hole. But for some people, if they're just running a basic, and like the screenshot was here, uh, you're going through and you have a, a Linksys router, you don't plan on upgrading any of your you know really basic routing, you're not gonna go to PF Sense, then Pi Hole makes perfect sense to use it as your DNS server internally so you can sync all things. But if you want to go with something like PF Sense, uh, which I'm, you know, obviously a fan of that firewall, and you use this as an add-on, now you've gone a step further, and also you don't have to have two separate devices. Uh, all of it can be done in one device. And in the video demo I did recently of the latest version of PF Blocker, um, I linked, I'll link 
leave a link to that down below. It is uh, fully supported and runs quite well here in 2019 on an SG1100, which is one of the you know relatively inexpensive uh, PFSense NetGate appliances. Uh, and it kind of makes one nice small turnkey solution for a lot of home users to be able to have all these advanced features all in one box and not have to deal with, you know, uh, the the poor quality is only can way to describe some of the consumer firewalls, especially if you're still running one of those really old Linksys firewalls. So it's not really a if of uh, this that or I can't really come up with a use case to run both unless you like the reporting in Pihole better because you like the way the graphs look in it. Um, I haven't looked at the Pihole project in a while since I did a video on it almost I think two years ago. Um, I think it's a great project, uh, but it's you know not it's redundant to run PF Blocker and Pi-hole at the same time. So it's just kind of a, a futile effort at that point. So there's not really any advantage if, unless you're trying to run different lists and you want to see if one misses, but the reality is if you run the same list, they're not going to do anything different because, well, they're the same feed list. And any of these are only as good as the feed list that you put in there and all of the tuning or all the headache of uh, either, you know, blacklisting certain sites or having to go back and whitelist certain sites because you've broke some functionality that you need or of sites you can't get to. All of that is going to occur on either one of them because that's more based on the list than the device or methodology used to do it. So hopefully this clears that up real quick about the difference between them, that there's really not a lot other than PF Blocker does more. They both do the same ad blocking. They both do it based on lists and they both are going to have the same challenges if you make those lists too restrictive of having to remove the, remove things and put them back on whitelist to gain functionality. So hopefully that cleared things up and uh, hopefully people find this and it's a shorter question before they go through and uh, start down a whole path and buy a whole separate system and build a separate pie hole to find out that it was just a quick plugin in PFSense that they're already using. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.